back. Glad to be here myself. We had a few ups and downs, and uh, seemed like after you get over one thing, right. then all of a sudden you get hit with something else. Right. Woke up with a cough this morning, and uh, I know my daughter was getting sick, and he was coughing at me. I told her to get away from me. <laughs> yeah. And I think it might have caught me a little bit. But I am thankful to be here today. And I'm thankful to see everyone. Yes. We have made it yeah. to the last mm -hmm. worship or the last Sunday yeah. morning yes, of uh, this year. Now there are many, many thousands of people that did not make it. Right. Yes. Many of your loved ones passed on. Yes, and many have been sick and ill and and uh, I know I have been, but I am not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I'm still thankful. Yeah, right, right. God is blessing us yeah. to be here. And there must be a reason. I have to say that. Now, Brother Moore, you're going to give me the signal. Yeah, I can. Thank you. <laughs> I have been instructed, and, and I, I remember last week, most times when I tell them to do that, but it comes so quick and I'm, I can't believe it happened so fast. The last week when he, I was waiting for the signal. <laughs> I was tired, I was, I was wearing out. He still didn't do the signal. So it just depends on how you're feeling about the signal. But we're gonna get into our lessons, a simple lesson today. A simple lesson today. One that I think that we can learn that we should take a heed to about giving. Galatians chapter 6, 6 through 10, we have heard this read many times. And I'm just reading it again to emphasize my lesson. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, mm -hmm. that shall he also reap. But he that soweth to the flesh shall reap of the flesh corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Or life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap. If we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity... Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Now Jesus himself taught many lessons using the uh, example of sowing and reaping, farming, or uh, the idea of planting and growing. And here it is echoed again in the letter to the Galatians. Yes. The idea about the law of harvest definitely is talking about giving. It's talking about capacity and equity, about sowing to the flesh and sowing to the spirit. It also says that eventually reaping day will come. So hang in there. Sometimes you do good and you don't see anything from it. And you may think that God is not aware of what you're doing. Mm. But God has a note taker that takes meticulous notes. Amen. And he is aware of what you're doing. Amen. And in this passage it says, uh, in due season. Yeah. Now I don't know what that means or what the time frame of due season is. Sure. But when God thinks it's right. Yeah. Yeah. When God thinks it's right, yeah. you shall reap. <laughs> Do good. That is our charge. Do good is our mantra. Do good is our mandate. It's our expectation. Do good unto all men. Regardless of race, color, creed, economic status, regardless of anything, do good unto all men yes. and especially yes. particularly, yes. particularly of the household of faith. 
If you would look over your fellow Christian to help uh, somebody on the outside, you would be in violation of this scripture. You need to first take care of home, then take care of outside of the home. So uh, we ought to be aware of each other and what we're going through. Those that need prayer, that's something easily or should be easily done, but those that need lifting up and those that need yes. encouragement yes. and money and whatever they need, they ought to be our first priority. Yes. Like Brother Sterling said, <laughs> Brother Sterling, I listen sometimes. <laughs> this holiday season is supposedly about Jesus. <laughs> Yet some of us give gifts to everybody except Christ. At the close of this year and the beginning of the new year, I want to discuss this. The true essence of the spirit of giving. The true essence of the spirit of giving. First I must say, I have absolutely nothing against gift giving. Yeah, right. yes, but the true spirit of giving is to give your best gifts to God. Yes. Amen. Just as he gave his very best gift to us. Amen. That's true. That's what Christmas is supposed to be about. Yeah. God made the ultimate sacrifice by giving his only begotten son. I oftentimes quote John 3 16 for God you can go there with me for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and that world we are a part of and we are a part of that world we ought to be thankful for that great and gracious gift but God doesn't expect us to make sacrifices like that. But at least we can do our best. God's not asking us to give the life of children any in exchange for his gift of his son. The only person that was tested in that way was Abraham. In the Genesis, the 22nd chapter, he was the one that came close to making that type of ultimate sacrifice. Right. The Bible calls it a time that God tested Abraham. Yes. And asked Abraham to sacrifice his son for him. And Abraham went about to do just that. I often know that I don't think I would be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Even for any one of my children, the good, the bad, or the indifferent. <laughs> I don't think you would have that or make that choice. Yeah. Yeah. But God spared Abraham from making that choice. Yeah. Spared Isaac. And but in a sense, he may have spared Isaac, but he didn't spare Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Right. God is the ultimate gift giver. Yes. He gave Jesus to die the cruelest inhumane death for our benefit. John 3 verse 17 says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God had a purpose for his sacrifice, purpose for the death of Jesus, the perfect purpose for the gift that he gave us. And it wasn't something that he did spontaneous, right. without thought, uh. and without concern uh, for Jesus or anyone else. Right. Turn with a, a Sterling Romans 5, 6 to 8. Yeah. Yeah. He planned it to yeah. give us a gift when we were most vulnerable, right. somewhere stuck in our sins. He said, Jesus, read, brother. When we were utterly helpless, we were utterly helpless. Christ came. Christ came. At just the right time. It was a planned 
coincidence. Yeah. It was a planned incident, not a coincidence, yeah. that Jesus came when we were utterly helpless. Yeah. Yeah. We could not do it for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Read. At just the right time. Just the right time. And died for just us. Just the right time. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm so thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Just the right time. Uh -huh. So when I'm down in my sickness and when I'm down in my feelings and I'm emotionally wrecked, Jesus is there just in the right time yeah. to build me up and make me strong. I cry sometimes. I weep sometimes. Yeah. But I pray because I know Jesus is there just in the right time. Yeah. It was when I couldn't help myself, when I could not do anything for myself, God built me up just in what? Right. The right time. Yes, God does everything right on time. Yes, yes. Yeah, you can say, oh, where did Jesus? Oh, where my God at? Oh, and he's right on time. Yes, he's right on time. Read for And died for us sinners. Died uh -huh. for what? Us sinners. You know what? I have one issue with Brother Sterling. He does not read the scripture right. <laughs> he died for you. He died for us sinners. You sinners. Us sinners. You all sinners. Us sinners. I'm inclusive. Not, don't include me in that. Don't include me in your problematic program. <laughs> he died for us. Now us. I don't like being included in that group. But I am in that group. He died Yes. Now, man, if you ain't happy, that's a gift. Right. Die for us sinners. Read. Yeah. Now, no one is likely to die for a good person. <coughs> Read. Though someone might be willing to die for a person who is especially good. All right, all right. <laughs> but right. God yeah. showed his great love for us by sending now, Christ to die for us. I kind of like the writer a little bit. Yeah. Kind of threw this in just for just for your your benefit. Yeah. He said, now, consequently, you know, somebody might die for a good person. Yeah. Might. Mm -hmm. But most folk ain't gonna die for no person. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, he'd have to be pretty good for me to, in an instant, step in and die. Yeah. Now, I'd have to love him a lot, and I'd have to not be thinking about myself when I did it. Yeah. I couldn't have no minutes to think about it. I had to do it immediately. <laughs> My brothers, I guess I would do that. I'd step in and be dead. I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't be able to say, oh no, why'd I do that? <laughs> but if I had some time to think about it. <laughs> somebody said, well, this is going to die, but you can step in. I'd be there thinking. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> I love him a little bit. <laughs> but I don't but he puts this in here to let you think about the, about the ma magnitude yeah. of the act yeah. of the gift. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody died for you. Yeah. Read that last verse. But God, but God showed his great love for us. He didn't think, he, I mean, he thought, but he demonstrated his love for us. By sending Christ to die for us. It must have been a, a hard decision. You know it was, because on the day that Jesus died, Jesus looked up into heaven and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He had to turn away because he was sold, his son was dying, but yet he did it because he loved us. Amen. Now that's a gift. Yes, now I'm going to get moving because of the time we're going to wait for. All right. <laughs> God's gift came right on time. Yes, yes. When we were utterly helpless, yes. he demonstrated his great love to us by sending Jesus Christ to die for us while we're still in our sins. Now the question we need to ask ourselves is, in lieu of what God has done, what gift can we give to God? What gift can we give to God? Well, first we must understand is that we cannot match God's gift. All right. All right. Yes. Now we used to sing a song with Brother uh, 
Brother uh, Buckner, you can't beat God did No matter how hard you try. Some feel that since they can't beat God's giving, there's no reason to give at all. And that's missing the point. Our attitude should be to give the best that we can for God because of the great gift he gave to us. We benefit from giving to God. The strange thing about giving to God is that it benefits you in the long run. <laughs> you get something out of it. In Acts 20, in verse 35, what does it say? I have showed you all things. Yes. How that so laboring you yeah. ought to support the weak. Did I show you how you ought to labor to support the weak? And to remember the words of the Lord, Lord Jesus. Remember Jesus. How he said. What did he say? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. That's the least you ought to be able to do. A man that gave his life, told you about giving, said it's more blessed to give than receive. You know what that tells me about Jesus? He didn't begrudge anybody that he has to die. He knew he had to die. And he did, and he may not like it, you know, in the, the Garden of Gethsemane, he asked three times for the past. But at the same time, he understood that the gift, the giving of the gift, is more important than maybe even receiving the gift. If you're in a position to give somebody something, then God must have placed something in your hand to give it. And you're not on the receiving end with nothing in your pocket. So, when we help others, then we are in communion with Jesus and his teaching. G. Paul echoed these sentiments as he says, support the weak. It's more blessed to give than receive. Let us adopt that attitude, helping the poor or disheartened. Kind of sad to see a Christian that's stingy. <laughs> it doesn't make really a lot of sense after all that God has done. Well, yeah. For a person that begrudges two dollars, three, whatever, don't want to put money, don't want to pledge, we didn't ask you to pledge, we actually just do what God has blessed you yeah. with. Uh -huh. It's kind of sad to see people not willing to do that yeah. after God has blessed them with so much. Yes, sir. And, and, and I, I just want to implore you as you move into the new year, give to God. Yeah. With a good heart yeah. and follow Jesus' command. Yeah. And realize that uh, we're not trying to get into your business. Because I do believe that true giving is a personal and private matter. Right. Uh -huh. Personal and private to a certain extent. Uh, but you know, as I say that, I understand. There is a parable in the Bible. Or no, not a parable, just an a, a incident where they were giving alms. Yes. yes. And as they were throwing their money in a, a bucket or whatever, they say Jesus was there and what was he doing? He was looking. Yeah. Now, uh, uh -oh. if we were to try to make a precedent, we would say, we're not going to be worried about what you give, but remember Jesus is looking. Yeah. Still looking. Yeah. He was looking at them throwing it in. There were those that threw in much and making a lot of noise and everything, and he's looking at that. There was, they said it was a poor widow woman. Showed up with just a few, two mites with him. Y'all know the story. Yeah. And threw it in. I don't know how she threw it in. She might have walked up there and just not dare to throw it in. Just kind of slipped it in. Yeah. He's looking at it. And she probably was thinking, oh, the devil. The master saw me with that little bit, and I'm ashamed. But afterwards, he made a story. He taught a lesson. She gave him the most, because she gave him all that she had. Now, you know what? I don't think anybody, except Crapflow Dollars, asking you to give all. Crapflow, <laughs> take y'all. I saw it myself. They signed the check over and put it on the, put it on the pulpit. And it was that he was said four times, four fold you will be blessed. But we're giving up the whole check, just right on the pulpit. I did notice though, at that time, 
Okay, we got you. <laughs> I didn't notice. He preaching. They throwing them checks down. And some meticulous brother was making sure that they was getting stacked up. <laughs> and I, was, I, don't, I don't know what happened to all that money. But four, four four, he was going to bless you. I can see folk get eager. That's not what God said. No, sir. No, sir. God was teaching a lesson about a woman that sacrificed all. But he wasn't telling you that you had to give all you had. No, but you need to give what God has blessed you with. I must move a little further because I didn't get far as I thought I was going to get. <laughs> Matthew 6, 1 through 4. What does it say? Take care. Uh -huh. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired. Okay. Because then you will lose reward from your Father in heaven. Keep reading. When you give a gift to someone in need, don't shout it as the uh, hypocrites do. That's right. Blowing trumpets in the yeah. synagogues and the streets to call attention to their acts of charity. Uh huh. I assure you, they have received all the reward they will get. Keep reading, right. sir. But when they give to someone, don't let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. Amen. Give your gifts in secret, yes. and your Father, who knows all secrets, right. will reward you. Yes. That's it. God's going to bless you. Amen. He knows if you're cheating him, that's for sure. Right. He knows if you're not. Yes. And he's going to bless you. And I'll tell you this. I never know anybody that gave to God to starve to death. Right. Never know anybody that gave to God that had any real issues. Well. God is going to make sure that his children are taken care of. Oh, yes, Giving is not for boast or bragging, but originates from a pure heart of compassion yes. for a person that does not want recognition. They don't do it in public. They don't shout about it. They do not blow trumpets. Right. They give in secret. Mm -hmm. In our text, in Galatians 6, 7, it says, be not deceived. God's not mocked. Okay. Yes. That means that he understands and knows what you are doing. Right. You're not making a monkey out of God. Yeah. You're not. No. Laughing is not nothing else. Because yeah. whatsoever man saw, that yeah. shall he reap. Yeah. 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 I want to add just a couple more things I want to get out of here. <clears throat> the benefits of giving. Come on. Come on. There are benefits of giving. There are. First, dedicate yourself or ourselves to God. Amen. This covers all the bases. It's the greatest gift you can offer Him. Mm -hmm. This means that you will give our time, time to make an effort to attend services, morning, evening, and Bible study, time to dedicate to study and prayer. We should study daily and pray without ceasing. Yeah. Time to get involved with the church, yeah. committees, and attending services. Now is the time to start thinking about what you want to do and what you're going to do for 2018. Yes, sir. The great benefit of giving time to God through study and prayer is that your knowledge of the Bible will increase, your personal relationship will get stronger with God and with Christians. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to mention your feeling of, of spiritual worth shall be expanded Amen. when you commit to God. Right. Another way we can continue the spirit of giving is to give to other people. Yeah. Let's not be a Scrooge. <laughs> he was a selfish miser who only cared about two things, himself and his money. <laughs> Just like some of us. When I say give to others, I don't mean rich bosses who make six and six and seven figures. Right. Some people are always trying to impress somebody who got something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, people go in there and try to throw something down, give gifts to somebody who has something. That's not what I'm talking about either. Well, I'm talking about finding somebody that is in need. Yes. Yes, somebody, maybe an office clerk, a janitor on the job, better yet, someone you know personally who's not working, who's struggling financially, yes. caught up in the season with nothing to give. Yes. Continue your spirit of giving throughout the whole year. Yes. Just don't make a, you know what we can make these New Year's resolutions are good for about two and a half months. <laughs> We've done it here. Yeah. We be, we're, we're serious about trying to do stuff. And then we kind of just let it go. But that's all right. We're going to keep trying. Right. People are not just in need in November. 
They're not just in need in December, but they're in need in April, July, and throughout the whole year. And finally, we should give our means to God off the top. We ought to give it to him before Amen. the rest. Yes, sir. The brother Sterling would say, don't go in your pocket amongst the lint. Yes, <laughs> to find your pennies. But try to figure it out off the top. Now, I try to do that. First check I write every month is to God. Because I don't want it, it to be an afterthought. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's cashed by Brother Stevenson before I start making other checks and then all of a sudden it's all gone. Well, yes, sir. So I know you'll cash it on the Monday after the first. And by then I see it's in there that I can start paying Edison and who knows who else who come after me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so give it to God off the top. Yes, Continue to give. Don't allow anything like buying gifts for others keep you from giving mm -hmm. God. Yeah. You can do both. Yeah. I know. I got to get out of here. Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 5. Let's just read the one and two, Brother mm Sterling. -hmm. When you arrive in the land. Now this was instructions to uh, the people of Israel, God telling them yes. what to do when they got to the land. Yes. What is it saying? When you arrive in the land. When you arrive in the land. The Lord your God is giving you. Yeah, you know, God's going to give you this land when you arrive in the land. As, as a special possession. Uh huh. And you have conquered it. When you've conquered it. And settled there. When you settled there. Put some of your first produce <laughs> from each harvest. How about the last produce? Some of your how first that, produce. How about that rotten produce? <laughs> some of your first produce. How about some of that stuff that you don't want to eat and the cows and the calf won't eat and the pig won't fool with? How about some of that? Your first produce. Now you know what? You read when you read Malachi, you see they tried to do some of that. Mm -hmm. Third chapter of Malachi, they was yes. around with some with some lambs that were blind. <laughs> and they were trying to give it to God. Yeah. They were bringing some of that, 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 that raunchy, rank stuff to God and trying to slip it in on the offering. Mm -hmm. He said, give me the first produce. Yes. And I know if he took the first produce in the Old Testament, he wants the first you got in the New Testament. Yeah. You don't need me to think about that. It's not that. That's what you're about. Yes, sir. Proverbs 11, 24, and I'm going to call it a day. Uh, what does it say? One gives freely. One gives freely. Yet grows all the richer. Yes. Another with holes. Uh-huh. What should he give? What he should give. That's right. And only suffers one. <laughs> Proverbs is, is what they call wisdom literature. Yes. It's the wisdom literature of the Old Testament. Somebody selfishly, I mean, somebody who unselfishly gives freely. Yeah. And he gets what? Richer. 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 Yeah. And he said, another withholds what he should give. And then what does he have? Someone. He's only wanting something. Yeah. There are so many beautiful benefits to give. You're able to give money to others. It means that God has generously blessed you for yes, that. Yes, yes, There's a good feeling when you give to others and give to God cheerfully. Yes, sir. In Luke 6, 38. Yes, give and what will happen? It shall be given unto you. And what else happens? Good measure. If you give, More. it will be given unto you. This is one of Brother Stevenson's favorite ones because he liked the cereal box. Yeah. It settles. Yeah. And then when it settles, that's, a, that's what you really got. Yeah. Yeah. Good measure. Press down. Press down. Yeah. Shake it together. Shake it together. Run it over. Run it over. Shall men give it to your folks? Shall court? men and some other folks, you give to God and others, and then other folk will do what? Yeah. Give to your bosom. Yeah. Now, I don't know about this give your bosom program. <laughs> but if you put something in your bosom, it's going to be hard to get it out of there. <laughs> I dare say that. <laughs> Somebody put something in their bosom, it's staying there. Yes, sir. Oh. You know, you know, you disagree with me? No. i tell you one thing, I ain't going for it. <laughs> Especially in the new climate. <laughs> Yes. With all it shall be measured, 
Yeah. See you again. Ah, oh, that's y'all. You yeah. see, we, we can laugh and we can enjoy, but you know what? The spirit of giving is to give to God everything that you have. Yes, sir. Right. And give God off the top and take care of his people mm -hmm. first and then take care of the world. Wow. In due season you shall reap. Mm -hmm. Said do good unto all men, mm -hmm. especially the household of faith. Yes, yes. That's the beauty of it. And I'll tell you, it's not telling me that if you give, that you're going to be rich no. financially, no. you're going to have this and that and everything you want. I'm not what it's saying. But it's saying that God no. will bless you. That's what I want to talk about, spirit giving. Amen. In this season, let's give to God everything that we have. Amen. Let's share with others. As we walk into next year, let's do it all year long. This church, I'm talking to the choir. Because you have been known to give money beyond what you probably should to help folk all over this world. It's a blessing, and I'm proud to be a member of this congregation. Amen. Helping folk in Florida and Texas and Mexico and Puerto Rico. Yes, I would rather not be anywhere else. There are a lot of folk who can't get two dimes to help anybody. <laughs> this church will do a lot, and I'd be a wonderful people for it. And I'm just trying to encourage you to keep on keeping on. Amen. Give till it hurts, and all you give until it feels good. Yeah. Not till it hurts. Uh -huh. Give until it feels good. Right. Until God bless you. That's what we're going to do yeah. in 2018. Yeah. Moving forward. If you remember the church and you know that, hey, that, uh, I haven't done everything I should do. That's all right. God gives you an opportunity to come. Get your life right with God. He'll embolden you and give you the strength. Yeah. And he'll let you because all you have to do is pick your sin. I didn't do what I should have done last year. Well, guess what? You got to do here to start. And this, uh, and this is a blank slate we can get today. Amen. Repent of your sins and ask God to help you. Yeah. And ask God to, to give you everything that you need this year. If you had a rough year last year, mm -hmm. this I had a rough one. I'm asking God to give me a better year. Yeah. It's all right. He's going to give me the year that he thinks I need. That's right. And I'm going to ask you to thank him for that. Pray for all those who are sick and ill yes. that are having the time suffering and not with us right now. They can get back on their feet because God is still a gracious and wonderful God. Amen. And if you are not a member of the Church of Christ, we, you come by hearing the word of God that Jesus Christ lived and died for our sins. Yeah. And because of that, that's the biggest gift we ever had. Yes. If you can accept that, that Jesus died for your sins, and God sent him here so that we may have salvation, that you can adhere, you can accept that. You accept it by hearing and believing in Jesus, repenting of your sins yes. through 13, 3, and 5, accepting the 30, and then confessing him before men that he is the son of the living God, like yes. in Acts 8 with the Ethiopian eunuch. Then you're not finished. You believe, you heard, you confess. Then you must be what? Very bad. Baptized. Why? Because baptism puts you into Christ and in the salvation. First Peter 3, 20 and 21, it says what? Baptism of what? Now save us. Romans 6, 3 and 4. You're buried with him in the likeness of his death and raised in the likeness of the resurrection. That's why we get baptized. Let's have a wonderful year. Let's have a wonderful time of giving. Let's get our lives right. Let's commit ourselves to Jesus Christ this year. He gave me a lot more strength today, Brother Moore. I have to give it back to you next week. We're going to sing and be encouraged right now. Let's get this standing.